Hey guys, my name is Payne and welcome back to the latest edition of the Studio Ghibli Project. Uh, after looking over all of these films for a long period of time, in this case for almost a year since I started making this project, very rarely do I come across a Studio Ghibli film that doesn't have either Hayao Miyazaki or Isao Takahata as either the director or the writer or in a couple of cases, the producer. As one or the other have been in all but one film up until this point, and that was Ocean Waves. That was the only movie where neither Miyazaki nor Takahata were a director or a writer. Ocean Waves wasn't even a theatrical release. And if you want to get a little technical, there was a second movie, and that was Whisper of the Heart, in which Hayao Miyazaki was a writer, but he wasn't a director. But he was still a part of the project, so I'm not counting that. Which brings me to today's film. Not only was this movie the first theatrical release of a film that didn't have either Miyazaki nor Takahata on it, but it was also the first spin-off film. Probably saw from the title already. And with that out of the way, here is the one and the only The Cat Returns. The Cat Returns was directed by a guy named Hiroyuki Morita, who came in as a animator for Studio Ghibli. Started working for him when they made My Neighbors the Yamadas in 1999. It was produced by both Toshio Suzuki and Nozomu Takahashi, and it was written by Reiko Yoshida, who, who would later be known uh, in the past few years for writing really good shows, really good anime series for Kyoto Animation, uh, writing for shows like K-On! and Violet Evergarden, and was even the screenwriter for the movie A Silent Voice, which came out a few years back. Of course, it was made by Studio Ghibli, and it came out on July 20th, 2002, released in the United States in 2005, and was distributed by G-Kids back in January of 2018, and is 75 minutes long. It's an hour and 15 minutes long. Just like I said earlier, The Cat Returns is a spin-off film. It is a spin-off of the 1995 Studio Ghibli film, Whisper of the Heart, link down below to that review, which was written by Hayao Miyazaki about a girl named Shizuku who aspires to be a writer. One of the things that inspires Shizuku in writing the story that's shown in the movie is through a mini cat statue called the Baron, which supposedly, after the movie came out, was a very popular character that's seen either A, standing still, or B, in a fantasy world that only covered one scene, but I digress. The Baron was so popular that a spin-off film was made, but what if I told you that the original project wasn't even a spin-off film, that there was a chance that this wasn't even going to be made? The story of The Cat Returns goes back to 1999, when Studio Ghibli received a request to make a 20-minute short for a theme park in Japan known as The Cat Project. That's the name of the short, not the theme park. And Miyazaki saw this as a chance to put the Baron in something else, as he wanted to put three things in the short when he found out that it was about cats. A, the Baron. B, one of the supporting characters in The Cat Returns, known as Muda. And three, uh, the mysterious antique shop uh, that is seen throughout this whole like original and spin-off film. And while they were working on that, Ghibli had commissioned Aoi Haragi, who wrote The Whisper of the Heart manga, to make a manga adaptation of the short known as Baron the Cat Returns. And after an unspecified amount of time, the theme park was like, yeah, you know what, we're just gonna, we're just gonna cancel this. No, we, we, we are gonna move forward with something else. Miyazaki did not like that at all, but he still wanted to work on something like this anyway. And he decided that he was gonna make this as a test for Studio Ghibli's younger animators. Another test uh, <laughs> since Studio Ghibli was made. Uh, and he commissioned one of the animators, Hiroyuki Morita, who... Again, his first job was My Neighbor the My Neighbors the Almanus just a few months earlier to be the director, and that it was announced that the short was gonna be from 20 minutes long to now 45 minutes long. And for people who do not know, from what I said earlier, the final project came out and was 75 minutes long. Over the next nine months, Marita adapted Aoi Haragi's manga into 525 pages of storyboards and it was at that moment when both Miyazaki and Toshio Suzuki realized hey we can make this into a feature film. So with that here is the story to The Cat Returns. The story follows a girl named Haru. After she saves a cat from going to another world aka getting hit by a car she receives a lot of gifts that she later finds out are from other cats 
because the cat that Haru saved was the prince of the cat kingdom known as Loon. I know it's sounding a little stupid, but please hear me out here. For anyone who's never heard of this movie before, you probably think it sounds stupid, but hear me out for the rest of this thing, please. Uh, Haru is then approached with the offer to the prince's hand in marriage, to which she doesn't actually say yes, but it's taken as a yes anyway because movie. Trying to clear up the air and explain that she doesn't want to be married to a cat, she is told to go to find a cat named Muda so that he could lead Haru to the cat business office, this is an actual place, where she meets the Baron, hence the title name, The Cat Returns. This is the cat and, 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 and the, the, the cat is returned, get it? Wordplay. He, he would then take Haru over to the cat kingdom, and when she gets there, she finds out that she slowly turns into a cat, and not only does she try to call off the supposed marriage to the dismay of the prince's father, the cat king, uh, but at the same time, she's trying to go back to the real world before she stays as a cat forever. One thing that stands out to me very clear as day when watching this is that although it was inspired out of a Miyazaki project, Hayao Miyazaki had nothing to do with this movie, and the reason why it stands out is because I honestly don't think I have ever belly laughed so hard watching a Studio Ghibli film, and I could never imagine myself doing that for a Miyazaki film at all. Uh, yeah, Hayao Miyazaki had nothing to do with this. I'm pretty sure he was getting ready to work on Howl's Moving Castle, or is in some sort of, like, development with that. Uh, but I believe that he would, I believe he was working on Howl's Moving Castle, but this was The funniest Studio Ghibli film I've ever seen there's one scene where One of the servants and the cat for the cat king did something this was during a scene where there's like a ceremony or something like that You have you know, you have all these people dancing and the cat king is just sitting there and is just eating his food and then the servants do something and then the cat king orders the, one of the servants to be literally thrown out of the one of the windows on the ceiling and I have no idea why but I just started laughing so hard so hard that it happened a second time and I didn't even fucking know that it happened a second time because I was still laughing at the first time this honestly caught me off guard I didn't expect a Studio Ghibli film to make me belly laugh the way it did uh, to give me a reaction of just straight up laughing my ass off throughout ma the majority of this movie, and I I'm not making fun of the film at all. It's because that it's 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 very funny. I'm gonna get more into that later, uh, but that's the first thing <laughs> that really really got my that really caught my interest because I don't think I've ever laughed so hard at a Ghibli film, and ever since I haven't. When it comes to the story, Morita definitely brings something to the table for his. Studio Ghibli directorial debut that neither Takahata nor Miyazaki has brought before and that is another take on gag humor and quicker pacing. While the other Ghibli films are fantastical uh, or grounded one or the other and really lets you sink in what you're seeing on screen, Morita had a different mindset when it came to approaching this project but was also able to keep in the fact that the concept is easy enough for a five-year-old to understand, but the momentum that the plot would bring would grab anybody's attention. Uh, just like with Spirited Away, the story is, being, is said to have the same concept as Alice in Wonderland in the sense that it's a girl going to another world to discover herself, only in this case, it's the one movie with this concept that, if I'm going to be honest here, the, the furry community will definitely hold on to, but I, I digress on that. Uh, overall, I thought the plot was pretty effective. Uh, the only bad thing I could say about this part is the runtime being used to films from Ghibli being near or over two hours long, uh, especially in the past few films. Spirit Away and Princess Mononoke were both a little over two hours long. I've just gotten used to seeing the runtime for that up to this point. Uh, as those have been, you know, as, as those films have been evident with recent reviews. So seeing that the runtime was only an hour and 15 minutes long caught me off guard, but it also felt like a missed opportunity when it came to the ending because I'm not going to spoil anything after the fact that he's go that she's going into the Cat Kingdom, but it, it, the ending was pretty predictable. Characters in The Cat Returns are likable, but are also the type of characters that you'd expect from a story like this, with the only big character with some development, and really the only character, if you want to make a concept like that that needed development, 
was the main character, Haru, as she goes basically against what most of the other multiple heroines have had to go through in the sense that she was just a normal schoolgirl school girl who was overcoming the odds of whatever, whatever was set against her. A couple of the other characters were memorable in their own right. Muda, who was played by Peter Boyle as a victim of victim and recipient of a lot of fat jokes, and the Cat King was played by Tim Curry, which really that's all I need to say, Tim Curry is a, a fucking talented human being, and the Baron, the title character, looks so goddamn smug, but instead he was a very likable character that had his own sense of flair to him that made him memorable even when you finished a movie. Uh, you know, he's... He's like, he, he, he's a good douche, I think is the best way to say it. God damn it. I don't think I've said that in a while. I've said it for Itsuki Koizumi of Haruhi, and that's the only time I've ever used that. The Baron is like a good douche. <laughs> you know, he, he wants to help Haru out, and really that's all I'm going to say about the rest of the movie. <laughs> the animation caught my eye because just like the plot, it was the same, but it was also different. Of course, while the animation is very smooth and just flows perfectly, giving the characters an extra kick in their step, especially in a few chase scenes that go on throughout the movie, something that Studio Ghibli has done a really good job of, both in the past and in the future. Morita does add his own style to it with the quick pacing. Unlike previous Ghibli heroines, Haru actually looks like that she could fit fine in a non-Ghibli production. She doesn't look like that should only be known for being in this one film. In this case, obviously she is because she's only shown in this movie, but if you inserted her in like a show that has nothing to do with Studio Ghibli, then that could actually work. Uh, that, that's really what it looked like. And it was one of the things that made her stand out through the entire movie as Marita, again, someone who started out with Ghibli in animation, also wanted to make the cats look both fluid and for characters like Muda and the Cat King, very realistically distinctive to their personality. It was a solid job on Marita's part, and it solidified how memorable and long-lasting these characters were going to be, even after I finished watching the movie. The music in this movie was done not by Johi Saishi, but once again by Yuji Nomi, who did the soundtrack, funny enough, for Whisper of the Heart, and is now back to do the soundtrack for The Cat Returns. And Nomi brings onto the scene of this movie a number of cheerful and bubbly tracks that do a really good job of keeping up with what the movie was doing. And the ending song, which is a ukulele track, does what literally every other ukulele songs have done, and that is put you in a really good mood, put you in high spirits. Uh, I, I know that it did for me. <laughs> I really, it really did. Um, overall, the music was pretty good, but not memorable enough to where I'd listen to the soundtrack as a standalone album after this review, but uh, as a part of the movie, it was it was pretty decent, I gotta be honest there. The Cat Returns, overall, isn't a movie that I consider a classic or a monumental or a masterpiece in any way, but instead, if I were to summarize this film with one word, it would be fun. Because of what this movie was, unlike any of the other Studio Ghibli films, it isn't meant to be taken seriously at all, and that's why this film was so good, because this is basically Studio Ghibli taking a break from making intellectual epics, and they just made a film that has a fair amount of gag comedy and you know silly remarks towards basically anything, and uh, dialogue that contains mainly just a bunch of jokes from many different characters and I mean it just shows how amazing the studio is because they even do a really good job at that. Basically what I'm trying to say here is that this is a very enjoyable movie. You, there are a lot of reasons why you should watch this movie. The action sequences, the dialogue, the characters, the theory that Shizuku from Whisper of the Heart wrote this alone uh, should grab your attention to watch this movie. Uh, yes, that is an actual theory. There was a couple people on Reddit who posted that. That's oh, that's really all I found with the extent of that. But that should be enough to have you watch this movie anyway. But if anything else catches your attention uh, when it comes to the cap returns, uh, that is also good as well. I do suggest this film. And with that, I'm going to give the cap returns an eight out of ten. Thank you guys for watching the latest edition of the Studio Ghibli Project. If you like this video, or if you like The Cat Returns, hit the like button down below. If you want to see any reviews that I'm going to make in the future, you can hit the subscribe button either on the screen or down in the description. And if you want to see any videos that I've made in the past, there are videos on the screen, they are down in the description, and they are down 
on my channel. And with that, my name is Payne, with five hours of sleep, and I'll see you in the next video.